Hello guys and welcome back to another MCRD tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you a new tutorial, well sort of new, it's um, updated version of the custom torch tutorial I did a while ago. I added some extra features uh, that people wanted uh, basically implemented so we'll be taking a look at that. Uh, but don't worry, I also have the original torch thing. I also ported that one to the uh, 2021.1 or point three, pardon me. Uh, whatever version we're on, I, th I think we're on 2021.2 or 20. I don't know. What the the link is the um, tag is in the thing for whatever version we're on. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, so we'll place this down, and as you can see, it places it wherever the face is. So if we were to place it on the ground, it would be on the ground. If we place it on the wall, then it will be on the wall. We can't actually place another torch on it, so that won't work. Uh, we can place it on any rotation, so it's ever whatever rotation we place it on. And you might notice the torch is actually off. If we open up the inventory, you can see there is a slot in here. We can put fuel in and it will light up. Uh, the ticks are determined based on the um, fuel item. So basically what you can do is you can basically determine how long you want one fuel item to basically uh, run now one of these items is basically running for three minutes and then it will consume another item uh, Once it's basically out of fuel Then what it's going to do is it's going to basically just turn off the torch uh, Back to the original state like that. So that's basically that um, Not much else I need to really demonstrate I would say uh, if you replace it on the wall, it would basically work on the wall as well. So as you can see like that so um, There are four block models. There are the the one for the off states for the wall and for the um, The ground the floor as well as both on and off states. So there's like four models in total and when you break it it basically just uh, drops the inventory items and gives you back a torch now one of the things that i have noticed is i just lost like a whole bunch of torches i'm not sure why i think it has to do with um something in the code so i'll have to take a look at that while we're browsing the um example workspace but yeah that's basically that uh let's go ahead and go into the t actual um m creator we'll start looking at the folder structure first all right so we have five different folders here uh there are tags uh there is procedures items guis and blocks we'll start with the blocks for this one now I'll cover a couple different important features in the um, actual thing that we need to focus on when we're setting it up. Most of the other settings for these blocks are going to be customizable. Uh, only the ones that I focus in on are usually the ones that require certain settings to be changed. So you might notice that there is a floor off and a floor on as well as a wall off and wall on. Uh, I will provide the block bench models that I used for making the models and stuff for this tutorial in the workspace uh, like I always do as well as the workspaces and procedures as well. So let's take a look at the um, off one first and as you can see we've set up the texture here for the bottom. We've set the, uh, this is for the floor as well, floor off. So we set the floor off model and then we have no rotation for the floor off model. We have it set on cutout, so that's the important thing that we need to do there. Uh, block hitbox, like the uh, bounding box, you can set this up to whatever fits your particular torch. And then we have the GUI name, we have um, it not to be in the creative inventory, you can set any material you like. Uh, we want to make sure that we can walk through the block so it's like a regular torch. Uh, the sound the sound for vanilla you can set to whatever you like. Uh, vanilla torches are I believe wood so you can set it to that. And then you have your drop properties. You want to make sure that you can actually drop the torch so make sure that it has the drop item that you want to drop and then have this set to one. 
may also want to have a creative pick item for that particular item as well. Uh, tool able to destroy, we're just going to leave this as not specified and then we're going to have the harvest amount set to zero. Uh, this will allow us to break us break it with our hands as well as any other tool. So that's that. Uh, advanced properties, you want to make sure the tick rate is set to one. This is important for the timer and you can set any of the other properties to however you want. You might want to have um, the uh, when being pushed to destroy because that's how normal torches actually function and then going on to block uh, entity what we want to do is enable block entity set our GUI which we'll cover in a little bit and then we want to make a right click action this will allow us to open up the bound uh, inventory for that particular block we want to have at least one slot so we can basically use fuel and we want to make sure that the fuel slot capacity is 64 or at least a certain number that we can actually put fuel into and these uh, down here are optional uh, drop items if, from inventory when block is destroyed this will all basically uh, drop the fuel item so it might be a little bit important for that comparator output you can leave disabled or enabled it doesn't matter uh, fuel energy storage. Now this I haven't set on any of them so you can configure it how you want. And then we have two procedures here for the, all of the torches. Both all of the torches use the same procedure. We have the update tick and then we have the uh, torch neighbor block changes. So when the neighbor block changes we're going to be running a script. Uh, anything that's connected to the torch. Uh, this will basically allow us to detect if the block it's supported on is going to be broken. So that's what that one does. This one has a bunch of different properties now compared to the older script. So uh, we'll cover that in a little bit. Generation and no generation, but you can configure it if you want it to generate as a block. But I wouldn't really recommend it because it has mechanics behind it. All right, so that's that one. Uh, the on one is a little bit different. Uh, the only difference though is we have the luminescence uh, set to the uh, to 15. You can set this to any number that you want. 15 is the brightest that you can go. Uh, I think torches are 10 or 11. I can't remember how bright they actually are but they're pretty bright. They're less than 15 and all those same properties pretty much um, again you want to make sure that all of them have the inventory like the the off state one that we had and uh, once you have your four blocks because we basically they all share those same properties anything that's on has you know the light value the ones that are off again will have the luminescence set to zero so those are those two things are really important uh, when you're setting that up all right, so carrying on to the items, uh, we have one item. We're just basically selecting our item texture. Properties, uh, we can set this, this maximum stack size to 64. Uh, miscellaneous is fine for wherever you want to put it, or you can put it under your custom tab, whatever. Uh, food properties, it's not a food, so we're moving on. It doesn't need an inventory, so we can move on and it doesn't have any particular procedures that we're running so it's just a generic item all right so to our GUI we have one GUI and then what we have is the one slot which is directly in the middle and then we also have a some text just to indicate what we're basically uh, open for the GUI so the slot isn't anything particular it just has our slot ID which is what we're going to be using for a few slot. And then we want to make sure that drop items when GUI is not bound to external inventory or is closed. So basically this will drop if it's not bound uh, to an external inventory. So um, if it doesn't properly link up to the block and you put items in the inventory, if it still opens, then it will, it, well, it should drop the actual items. Uh, you want to have the plate player dis disable player interaction with this slot disabled so you can actually put items inside the slot so that's that and nothing fancy with the text it's just regular text all right so once you've done that uh, you can move on to the tags so we're going to need 
four different types of tags. We need one to test for the two types of blocks for the floor. I suggest putting this under your own namespace. It needs to be a block tag type. And you can use categories to kind of specify different types of materials for your torches and stuff. I suggest your torch name and then your um, basically the indicator for what kind of tag it is. So this one would be for floor. And then we have one for wall as well. So these would be the on off states for the wall one. And then we have the off states, which is basically again, metal slash off. It's under the torch um, namespaces, which we're actually working on the workspace right now. And we have both of the off states and the other one is the on states. So that's that one. And then what we also have one, an item tag which is under the item ta ta tag type item. The namespace is again the same, and then we're putting it under fuel. This one basically has uh, the item that we're going to be using for fuel. So you can put any items that you wanna use for fuel for the torches in this particular tag. All right, so that's that part done. Uh, that's the easy stuff. Now we'll move on to the item procedure. This is the first thing that happens when your torch is being placed. So we're going to basically run this procedure as a global um, global procedure. It's going to be the one that says player right clicks on block. And then what we're doing is we're testing for the item in the main hand of the provided entity. And then we're selecting our item torch. Now for that, what you need to do is go under flow control, get an if statement, and then you have your item comparator here and then you have the item selector which can be found under minecraft components and then under entity data you have the item item in main hand which is that particular block right there so that's that part after it's doing that what we're doing is we're going to be testing if the item in the player's main hand is or pardon me if the uh, player is in survival or adventure. So if they're in survival or adventure, then what we want to do is we want to set main hand in item or set item in main hand. And then we're going to get the amount of items in the main hand, subtract by one. And we're going to set that to the main item in hand. So basically it will always deduct one item from the main hand item. And if they're in adventure or survival. Now I'm to find those blocks, what you can do is you, you will need an if statement, you'll need to go to logic, grab a or block, and then what you'll need is to go to player procedures, scroll down until you see the one that says game mode, and then you want to set this to survival and adventure, so these two right here. So that's basically what you would need to set up. And that's that part. Uh, for this set item in main hand, you can find that under entity management. If I think it's under entity management. Yeah, it should be under here. And then you scroll down and then it's this block right here. What you would want to do is replace this with a math operator. Set the icon to subtract by one. Go to item procedures. Item, get number of items from of item in provided entity. And then what you want to do is you want to go to entity data, grab item in main hand, place that down here. And then what you want to do is basically set the item in main hand to that. So it basically always determines the main hand item. Uh, lastly, we have two local variables, one for floor off and one for wall off. So this will vary depending on what um, kind of model that we're, what block we basically just placed. So we haven't placed the block just yet, but what we want to do is we want to make sure that we can actually place it later on. It will be indicated later on with the rest of the script. So to do that, you set your local variables and then what you need to do is you need to go to local variables and then set variable and then go to Minecraft components, select the block, and then you want your floor block and you want your wall block as well for both of your off states. 
Next, what we're doing is we're doing a couple things. Uh, we're testing for, to make sure that the entity is not right clicking on a torch that is already in place. So it doesn't actually just go ahead and place the um, torch on a torch that you already have. So what we want to do is we want to actually go ahead and grab a block right here, which is the item tag one and then we're going to remove that and we're going to go back to block data and we're going to basically put that in I'm going to put your tag name in here for your your on and your off so you're going to need to have two of these one is going to be for um i think it's an and statement so you need an and statement Whoop and then you need two not statements so one like this and the other one like that so not statements can be found under logic and statements can also be found under logic it's this block right here you click on it i've done a tutorial on that and then that's basically going to encase your main script which is this one right here so after you've done that, what you need to do is you need to set up your directions. So if it's on the block facing up that you're right clicking on of the target uh, direction slash face, so triggers direction slash face, if it equals up, then you're going to be running the script for the actual, um, the actual uh, torch standing up and then you have the directions north east south west uh, down below which are basically going to be for the wall ones now I suggest just downloading the workspace and using the procedures from that particular workspace because I have them exported so you can just import the procedure and set it up automatically and it's all configured and all you need to do is basically set up your tags and your tags uh, for the um, MBT, your items and blocks need to be configured. But outside of that, um, what this is basically doing, in short, it's running it on server side. It's going to test if the block is air, and then it's going to place the block at the location for the floor off or the wall on or off version. And then it's going to set the direction depending if it's um, a wall one or not. So if it's not one, a wall version, then it's not going to set the direction. It's going to set the burn time though to that particular block that we just placed. And then it's going to be placing a sound of the block being placed down, what if wood or whatever. You can set this to however you want, to whatever sound that you really need for it. But for this example, I've just used a block slash wood it needs to be under the category for blocks though so when you have that set up make sure that it's all set up like that but yeah definitely download it it's easier than trying to program and i just really don't have the time or patience to go through all the different blocks and teach you how to add it they're in these categories if the blocks i use are all vanilla so uh the ones that i do have for plugins will be implemented in the next update so outside of that that's that one uh, for the other procedure we have the update tick this is the next thing that actually runs we're going to be testing for our actual local variable for block state these are for our floor on floor off wall on wall off and then we're basically testing for the metal uh, on torch so this will only run when the torch is on uh, what this does, it basically has a burn timer, which is going to test if it's greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, it's going to subtract the timer by one each tick. And then what it's going to do down here is once it's zero, it's going to run the else statement. And then it's going to test if the there is any fuel in the slot zero of the uh, inventory, which should be our fuel item. Uh, which is specified here for our tag and then what it's going to do is it's going to set the burn time if that is true and then remove one item from the actual fuel slot if it's run out of items then what it's going to do is it's just going to set the state over to the off state so again it's going to test for if the the torch is on a floor torch or a wall torch that is on and that's going to replace it with that particular model 
Okay, so if the block is off, what it's going to do is it's going to just simply test if the block is off, and then it's going to run the test for the inventory if there's fuel in the actual inventory of the torch of the block. And if there is, it's going to set the burn time. And then if there, of course, when it sets the burn time, what we need to do is we need to remove one item from that particular slot. And then we're going to set the state of the thing. So again, it's going to test if the floor is off, it's going to set the floor to on. If it's the uh, wall off, then it's going to set the wall on. That's as really simple as it is. Again, this procedure will be in the uh, files that I provide as well. All right, and then we have neighborhood our torch neighbor block changes. Uh, this is probably the easiest one to cover. Uh, what this is, is doing is it's just testing for if the for the basically the type of block that it is. So this one's testing for the wall torch. This one down here is testing for the floor torch. Uh, depending on the location of where the torch is facing for the wall one, it will determine where the block it needs to test if there is air there. So if there's an air block where it should be supported, it's going to basically remove the block with a drop in the center of the location, and that's going to do for all those particular sides. For the one that's on the floor, what it's going to do is it's going to actually just test for the block directly below and if it's air then it's going to go ahead and drop that particular block now the direction get direction get block direction at and then the one here is basically helping to test if the block is actually facing that direction because there might be uh, multiple air blocks depending on the uh, the location where it's placed and you just want to test for the one that it's actually being placed on so that's what these ones are here for all right, so that's basically it. Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to cover. For textures, you're going to need your on and off textures for your model and possibly an animated texture for the thing that I used for the actual torch. You're going to need an item texture and a GUI texture. Models, you're just basic JSON models. You're going to need your all different four of them. So your basically your on ones for your uh, torch wall and your off ones for your torch wall and your on ones for your floor and your off one for your floor. Uh, again, everything that is in this workspace is provided in the project files. So it will be on Discord. It'll have the original workspace that I started with. Um, it will have the basic version of this updated version. So for anything without fuel and then it will have the one with fuel so there will be multiple different files and stuff like that for the actual workspaces that you can play around with and see how things work uh, again i'll provide that in the description so you guys can directly go to the github page for that uh, so that if that's all that i have time for if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out